Hey, it's Kevin DeWitt here. Welcome to another plug-in knowledge session. This week we're going to continue on with our little trek of isotope neutron and we're going to look at what I consider to be some of the advanced features, some of the features that didn't quite fit into the other components of neutron and can be sort of pulled out separately or done in a different way. So the first one we're going to have a look at is the tonal balance and we're going to check that out, put it on the mix and see what it does. So the whole purpose of the tonal balance here is to be able to sort of get a visual representation of the frequency balance of your mix and does it fit or compare to other styles of music which, you know, they have some default presets and you can create your own. So it gives you a sort of indication of whether your mix is in the ballpark frequency-wise. Uh, obviously it's a guide. Uh, you need to still use your ears to make your own call on that. So, you know, um, but gives you a starting point, gives you an indication of whether there's any major problems you're not hearing because your room or your ears just aren't great or whatever it is. So let's go and check it out and see what we think. Okay, so let's go over the basics here. We have a few controls at the top. Obviously, we've got a help function here. We've got a settings control. So we can just adjust a couple of little settings here, nothing major. We've got a broad and a fine. We've got a target control and we can create customized targets if we like. And then we've got our main view here. So at the moment, we're in broad mode. And what we're showing is we it's broken up into frequency sections. So here's sort of our low end, our low mids, our high mids and our highs. And based on this target, it changes these values here. So if we said a modern song, this is where they believe is the, the expected or generally recommended range that your, your frequencies should be sitting in at that level. Okay, so you will see when we play, there'll be a white line and it will sit, hopefully, within each of these bands, but you'll see, depending on your song, that may not necessarily be appropriate. And then we have this crest factor here, which is just on the low end, so it's basically telling you the dynamic range of your low end. And if it goes this way to the left, they indicate that your your song has, is its low end is too dynamic and could be controlled and compressed more. And if it's the other way, then it's too compressed and you've got very little dynamic there. So obviously the ideal spot is somewhere in the middle here. Uh, but again, it is a guide. So keep that in mind because it all depends on this target and what you're looking at. Now, you can also switch over to fine mode and you'll see that this becomes then a waveform and it'll show you a lot more detail of the actual frequencies and that's the range that you should be in. So let's just turn the volume down and let's play a song and let's have a look at what it looks like. So you can see our white lines here, so each one of these is sort of pretty much in the range, which is good. So you can see when things start to drop to the low end of the scale or that. And you can see here our crest factor is pretty good. It's, it's bordering on becoming too dynamic, but it's coming back and forth within there. If we switch over to our fine, you can see here Got a couple of spots here that maybe aren't quite sitting in the right spot. Maybe a little bit high on a couple. And that one's going a little bit over. So that's the difference between the broad. The average in the broad meant that that was in. But when you look at it, the very top, top of this was a little bit too high. Okay, so, and again, as I said, this is a guide. It's not perfect. This is recommended but it's not a rule, okay? So if you want that extra top end, then you go for it. If you want that extra amount of kick because you really want it to thump, then that's fine as well. 
It's just a guide, okay? But it gives you an idea to check things if you are not sure. Okay, so now if we switch between them, you'll see here the change in that. So if we were to pretend this was orchestral, then we're pretty much missing the mark on the top and the on the high and the low mid there. And we're borderline on the other two. As we move over to a bass heavy, we're pretty much in there right on track here. So if you look at this, we could even go higher with our bass if we wanted to. There's no problem with that. Because if we look at the fine detail here, see our very, very low end, we don't really have the sub thump in this song that a bass heavy song would have. But again, listen to the song. It has nothing to do with any low end thump there. You know, there might be another song that we could pick which might be a bit more closer in style so our low end now is a bit more in the ballpark but we've got a whole totally different dynamic now got a lot of top end here that's sitting above we've got a bit of a dip here in the middle and it all depends on the instrumentation you have. Okay, so again, as I said, this is a guide. So that's how you would use it just in its basic function. Just check your tonal balance across your song with it sitting on the mix bus. Okay, so with our targets here, we obviously come with three basic settings here, but we can actually load our own and create our own custom ones here. So if we wanted to customize this, let's go back to our broad here. So we can compare this to anything we like. So we can have our own reference tracks and audio files. We can compare it to one audio file if we want to check it against a particular song, but we can also do it against folders of audio files. So you might have your reference tracks stored somewhere. So in, for instance here, references, and you might have them sorted in genres or an artist or something like that. So let's say for instance, I wanna do alternative. So I have a range of alternative style music songs here, and I can then click on that and it will go and start analyzing all of the songs in that folder and will create a target range based on those songs. So you'll see here we've adjusted our frequencies here. So now we've done that, we could save that balance and we could call that alternative uh, genre. Okay, so now if we were to play our song, let's go back to our other one. It was, let's go to this one. Okay, so this is what they're estimating with the alternative genre that I loaded based on the songs, obviously. So we're pretty much in the ballpark here. Obviously the highs on the alternative here is indicating that it's a lot lower. And you'll see here we're right on the top edge of that. So we could have made this song a bit duller to a better match this alternative here. But everything else is sort of sitting in the ballpark there, which is pretty good. So we could do that for lots of different uh, files or folders. So we could keep going through all of our list of references here. Uh, we've got say a ballad section here, so we could do that. Get it to analyze. So once it's analyzed again, these are all moved. Some have got a bigger range now because 
I guess the more files you give it, if they've got a broader scope of frequency ranges per song, then these areas are going to expand because you've got a lot more range flexibility in that. So we could keep going with all of those and, and we could we could load up lots of songs. to give our comparisons here based on all of our genres of style of music so that when we are doing a mix, we can quickly pull this up, pick the right genre that matches, and we're good to go. As I said, if you want to compare it to one individual song, because let's say you've got an artist that says, can you do a mix for me? And this is a song I've got. It's in this style. I want it to sound like whoever, um, you know, I want it to sound like Bruno Mars, right? and this song. You could load that up so that you could compare your frequency balance to that actual song, which can be very handy to do. So we can change the target of where the files are stored. We can show the folder. And as I said, we can load them and save them. So that's a very nice feature. Now, the other thing you can do here is you can see this control down here select a plugin so when we look at this we can select other plugins and when I'm talking about other plugins I'm talking about this control works with ozone 8 and works with neutron 2 so if we go we've got see we've got our mix bus here and I actually loaded a version of neutron 2 on there so if we go to select plugin, you'll see here it says full mix bus, which is where that plugin's loaded. So we could click on that, and now what you see is we have some options to control that plugin. So we are actually remotely controlling the Neutron plugin over here. So if I could open that at the same time with our tonal control. You could see here, as we're looking at our meter, we could start to make some changes. So we could turn that on. So you can see it's moving over here in this plugin. And that functions for both Neutron 2 and Ozone, but you don't have to have it on this channel. So we could actually go to our song channel here or a drum channel, and we could actually load something so let's say we load ozone just the full version and i'll put that on there okay and now if we go to here you'll see that we've got listed ozone one and that's based on this name here so you might Call, you might give this a name. Let's say it's Song 11 Ozone. Because what you might want to do is you might also want to load Neutron. So we can then call that, well, it's already come up as Song 11, and we'll call it Neutron. So then we go back to our tonal balance here and we can now see that we've got Song 11 Neutron, Song 11 Ozone and our full mix bus. So we can switch between these and actually change things. We've got soft saturation, we can bypass. It's a toggle switch, so we've got to hold it. We can minimize, bring it back up. So you can see you get different settings here all together. But what if we loaded individual components? So let's say instead of loading the full Neutron, what if we loaded only the Neutron compressor? Okay, so now when we go across here, we see the compressor and there's limited controls that you can do. You can see here, there's no controls 
that appear here, but if I was to play this song, we get to see the waveform that is appearing over here. Now, I don't really know what the value is but of that, but I guess it's showing you the waveform at this point in time. So that's with that one there. But you could see when I had it in equalizer mode, or if I switch over to ozone, we can actually make some adjustments to the EQ. We just can't control lots of other things. It's limited to what it control, which, you know, it's pretty much expected because where it's handy is, is that it would be handy to be able to make some slight EQ adjustments while you're looking at the signal going through this panel here, but you're probably not going to go and start playing with compressors and all that sort of stuff while you're looking at that. So that's tonal balance. So I think that's a great feature and it's uh, definitely quite useful. All right, so that's the Isotope Tonal Balance. Check it out. Uh, have a play with that if you've got Neutron. Obviously, if you haven't got Neutron, see if you can try it out and have a play with it to go with it. But uh, very handy, very good for checking your mix and referencing it. So I, uh, I like it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And I would definitely be putting it on the mix bus if you've got it. And you can even use it for mastering as well to uh, to just do another check of your, you can use it to just do another check of the balance of your song during mastering, if you like. So go check it out. Hopefully it's been helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.